Hi, welcome to Tim's Desk. Uh, on my last introduction video, I said I would give you a little tour of my bench and I didn't include it on that video. So I've decided to do it as a separate video. Uh, what I also include on this video is what I've been doing recently. Um, work I've been working on, work I've nearly finished, and what work I'm coming up and working on soon. Um, so I'll start off with showing you through my work area where I do my work, uh, I'll then go on to the tools that I use, um, what products I like to use, uh, and some of my more extravagant tools that are great to have in your arsenal. Uh, but I will be honest, they are they are on the expensive side, but they are such good tools to have. Um, so first off, I'm going to show you through my bench. Now let me grab the camera. So. Let me back up a little bit. This is my work area. I'm in the corner of my front room. Uh, to the left there, I have my paint rack. Uh, I've got my Gunzi on there. I've got Acans, Revels. Uh, I've got some Zero paints, the Owlclads, Createx, uh, Badger, uh, Ghost Tints, um, some of the Buffer Ball and the Super Metallics. In the middle, I've got my Mac, uh, most useful tool I use every single day. Uh, down below there I have my small drawers with all of my usable tools. Uh, I've got my snips there, got all the glue to that side. Over on the right hand side here I've got a cheeky little beer sitting there. I've got my airbrushes, I've got some of the weathering products, uh, my power sockets. Uh, up above my general use and then right up there is all of my uh, thinners and brushes that I keep out of reach from certain little hands. So now what I'll do is I'll go through uh, what I've got down on these uh, lower boxes here, what I, what I like to use the most, um, and what also I have hidden down underneath the desk. Uh, what I keep down there, uh, down on this far side, buried down underneath there, is my printer for when I'm doing some work. Uh, I've got my compressor, hidden far down there as well not the best place to keep it uh, as you should really be able to get to it to drain the tank now and again and i've got all these drawers with i think i've got uh, my scratch building materials up there i then got my tools that i don't really use a lot i've got my paints tamir paints in there um i've got some aftermarket in there uh also to the side there desk uh, my fan that's definitely needs is it is the summer solstice today and it's one of the hottest days in the UK. It is sweltering. Oh, a bit sticky, I must say. Uh, and then I've got my yes, yeah, so I've got uh, more aftermarket down the side there. Um so this is where I where I do my work, where I do parts for the show using the Mac, which is mighty handy. Uh, and this is where I spend most of my evenings uh, relaxing and talking to the guys uh, on the hangouts as well. Um, so let me go through the drawers and I'll show you some of my, first off I'll go through my most used and favourite tools. Okay, so let's start with them. These are my most basic uh, and mostly used tools. Okay, some of them aren't most basic but this is, this will be my kit that I would need as well as the compressor underneath uh, for doing modelling. Um, start down with when you're building the model, always Tamir glues. Uh, the extra thin, uh, which is the green lid, they do the white cement well as well, which is a slower setting, thicker type glue. There is also the extra thin stuff, but I don't use that that much. Uh, only now and again do I use that. I mainly use the, the centre green one there. Uh, knives, now, lots of people have many different knives that they use um, a lot of people will stand by the Windsor Newtons um, sorry Swan and Norton so Windsor Newton that's brushes Swan and Norton knives uh, I've used them quite a few times I've had various different handles different shaped blades the one I always go back to are these to me are hobby knives uh, this one is called the modeler's knife and this one I think is a call a design knife they take slightly different blades. They want one slightly larger than the other. Just make out. Yeah, they do different shapes of them. 
these are the blades I always go back to and the handles I always go back to. I've used them ever since the very first days of my modeling. These were what I was very first given by my father. Uh, I, this one here is actually the still, still the same one I was given that was right at the start. It doesn't break, it doesn't wear out. They're just perfect. They feel nice, they weigh nice. I will never get rid of these Tamiya blades and I will always use them. Such a testament to us all if you always pick it up. Next thing are tweezers. Now you can buy so, so many different makes of tweezers out there. Uh, and I was buying quite a few different ones. I've got so many in one of my drawers underneath the bottom there. And I was told just buy the Tamiya ones. And I bought these probably about a year and a half, two years ago now. And they're still perfectly straight. They still meet. They weigh, they weigh nice, they feel nice, and they work. Tamiya tools, you can't go wrong with. They only make two the two types, the straight and the, the angled. And they do one another one which is designed for uh, decals as well. Um, but these are the two main product uh, use ones that I do. Uh, I do have some clamp versions of the dough, sort of slightly cheap ones. that are good when I'm doing some painting work. But for building, these are the ones I always pick. Next along, sanders. Um, again, there are many, many different brands out there. Uh, I bought some of these Ultimate Modeling products. I'll give them a, bit, a big up here, definitely, because they do just some wonderful tools. And these Ultimate Sanders, they live up to their name. They're wonderful to use. They've got so many different grits. I can, I've got a different grit for every type of use. I've got this one here, which is a buffer, so it's good for clear parts. I've got this one, this little called a razor saw, which cuts through everything. It was great for my balsa plane. Uh, I've got the grey pad there, I find very helpful and good for taking off uh, seam joins and when you've been joining two sort of round parts together and you want to get rid of that um, glue mark, they're, they're great for that. And then your grey, they've got about, uh, I think it's five different variants of different grades in their, in their grey sanders of different types. Uh, and every single one I've got and every single one I use for different, doing slightly different stages. Um, so these are super, super handy. Well worth visiting their site and getting some if you're after some good quality sanders. And cutters. Again, there are a lot of these out there. I've got, I've had quite a few. Um, these are the Tamiya's again. You'll notice there's like regular occurrence with Tamiya with me and tools. If mainly because they build and make some of the best tools, I think, for the modeling trade out there. Uh, these are the slightly longer tipped cutters. Uh, really enjoy using these. Um, I've got the Zorons, which are the, 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 the Pro, I can never remember the, the exact number on them, if they've got them stamped on there. No, they haven't got it stamped already on there. Um, you can see the difference in size. These Tamiya ones are a lot smaller. So, but I prefer using these. These are good. These are great for cutting through quite large sprue if you need to. Um, they, but these are these are my fine fine point ones. Absolutely wonderful. And last but not least, airbrush. Uh, I'll be honest. This is my most picked up and used one. This is the Iwata HPC Plus. Uh, I got this from Martin at Air-Craft.net. Um, wonderful guy to deal with. His knowledge on airbrushing and airbrushes is superb. He can quite easily direct you exactly where you need to to buy what you need to buy. Uh, and this is my most picked up and used item. I've got I've got several others. I'll go through them. Um, but this is the one I I pretty much always go back and pick up. Um, I just I, I it's there's a certain word for it. I can it's it's so. It's got like a finger memory. I know I can just pick it up and I can use it. So that's that's my that's my main choice. Um, now what I'll do is I'll go back through and show you some more of the items I've got of each type um, and sh see what else I've got. Okay, so I thought let's start off with the airbrushes. Uh, I've got four that I have that I use. Um, like I said, I'll be honest. My main my main use one is my HPCs. That's uh that's my main, my always first one I always pick up to use. I do have a HPB, which is a much smaller cup, much finer tip, very good for detail uh, airbrushing. So I do like that one. I've got the Ultimate, uh, Ultimate Apex. 
I, this one's good for, I like using this for priming. Um, that's, that's my main use for that one, using the bear there, ultimate primer through it. Uh, that's my main use for that type. Uh, and then I've got PS90. Uh, now I bought this to do large areas and gloss coats. Um, but I found my compressor finds it quite hard to keep up with it. Now I've got I've got a Sparmax. Now I can't remember the number off the top of my head. Um, very good. It's a tank uh, compressor with tank uh, in it. Very good unit. It just this does find it quite hard to keep up with the 290 with the fan pattern head on there. Um, but it is good for large area use. Uh, I've got a 172 sub uh, German submarine to do. Um, so that's one of the main reasons I bought that one. And to do gloss coats on cars, so you can get a nice, quick, even layer of gloss over them. Uh, very good airbrush. Um, Ultima Apex, very nice, very easy to use. Uh, like I say, I use that for my primers. And then you've got the two eye waters. Very, very good airbrushes. Uh, both of these were purchased through Air. Actually, these three were purchased through Air Dashcraft on that. Uh, the Ultimate was done through Ultimate Modeling Products. Um, I, I can't fault any of these. Really like using all of them. Um, let's go on to... Let's go on to paints and then thinners and then primers. So... I've got quite a varied range of uh, manufacturers of thinner uh, of paints down the bottom here. Um, I've got Revel Aqua Color, uh, which come in these little rect uh, rectangular square pots. Uh, this is this is actually a very 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 good paint. The paint you get in here is extremely thick. It's a very thick paint, but when it's thinned down without my airbrush thinner. This stuff thins brilliantly and paints very, very well. Do not snub this. It's well worth, if it's got a colour in your in your kit and it's in that colour, in the aqua colour range, pick it and use it. Well thinned version of this. Don't use water, use proper thinners and you will not you will not be disappointed. Wonderful, wonderful product that one. Uh, then you've got Vallejo's uh, Metal Colour, which is straight out the pot spray. Uh, they do quite a large range uh, of these now. I need to expand my range. I've only got four of them at the moment, um, but quite happy with these. You can brush paint these, which I was quite happy with. You need a couple of coats, but you can brush paint them if you want to just do a small item and you don't want the hassle of masking them up. Uh, it's well worth looking into. Uh, these are Badger Miniatures. Uh, these are called Ghost Tints. I haven't had a proper chance to use these yet. I'm hoping to be able to do something with them um, fairly soon um, the colours they give in the bottles are absolutely wonderful so I hope to make some good use of those Alclad now if you know about metallics you'll know about Alclads they do some beautiful colours and uh, their range is huge if you're doing if you want to paint metals Alclads are usually the first ones you always pick up and go to some of the colours can be very delicate to use I'll put it in that term uh, things like the chrome, you you need to learn how to use and spray it. Uh, you can't just pick it up and go, yeah, oh, you'll find it won't work. You've got to, and one thing especially with that Alclad, read the bottles at the back. Uh, many of my friends will be laughing at me going, yes, I use Aqua Gloss. Now, on their bottle, it says not to shake it. I was shaking it. It doesn't work when you shake it. It really doesn't work. So read the bottles, wonderful products. Uh, now these are Createx uh, airbrush colours. Now these aren't these aren't specifically for modelling. I think they're actually designed for fabric spraying. Um, but they do make some beautiful colours, and they're great for doing car bodies with and doing something really quite fun funky with them. Uh, zero paints. These are a lacquer based paint. You can see the fluorescent on this one. This is for the Mazda 787B. The Re Rian version, and um, he makes to order specialist paints and then stock paints as well. For if there's a car out there that's got painted a color, he can do it for you. Um, very good stuff. Like using their their colors. Now the main one I always use at the moment is Mr. Hobby. These are the Aqua acrylic 
versions. Um, there are the lacquer base versions, but they're not as they weren't as readily available in the UK, and they've only just come in recently. Um, but I've got most of mine on Aqua, and I just stick with them. You can mix in Mr. Thin, Mr. Color Thinner, Mr. Leveling Thinner with them uh, to make them into like a lacquer based type product. Then, um, also from the Mr. Hobby Gunsy range is their Super Metallics. They do a small range of them. There is four, five, six, seven of them. Only six of them are available in the UK. One of them you have to always order from uh, abroad. I'm not too sure exactly why on that. That's just the way it is. Um, another one, if you're into doing painting metallics and uh, like car kits or bike kits, get these. Um, they work brilliantly alongside uh, our clads. Uh, now, this, these ones are another Gunzi. These are the Buffables. Uh, that literally is what their name is and they, that's what is they do. You can paint them on, you can buff them up to a shine. They can be very delicate though. Uh, they are a type of paint you spray, you do not touch again. Uh, the more you touch it, the more the buff, the more they come away and you can actually wear the paint away. Um, so you've got to be pretty careful with using them once. Uh, now this one is, this is my gloss. This is what I've been using recently. I've got a few others that I've used. Um, I've got ones from Zero. Uh, I've also got Gunzi's version of it as well. Actually, we're going to grab that over, so I'll show you both of them at the same time. Um, you've got Tamir Clear X22, and then you've got Gunzi Mr. Hobby GX100. Now, these thin down with Mr. Leveling Thinner are brilliant gloss coat. Uh, I've done my recent golf, which I'll show at the end, uh, with that, and really quite happy with that X22. Um, and GX100, pretty much just near same sort of results. You can get very good gloss coats with them. And back onto normal paints. Now these are A-cans, or Aka, A-K-A-H. Um, they are made in Russia and distributed around the world. These can be very, very fiddly to get, not, not to paint, but to get hold of. <laughs> uh, if, if you see them in stock, buy them. <laughs> that's, that's the simplest explanation of trying to get hold of them. Because um, you'll find... You will want a set, you can't order the set. So you go looking for the individual paints. You'll get, if there's six in a set, you'll get four to five of the paints in stock around in separates. You'll never get them all in one. It's it's fun chasing these paints down. Uh, but they do spray very well and they are nice colors. And um, their main base of color range that they're very good for is the Russian stuff. So if you're into doing Russian jets, uh, definitely look at getting hold of their campaigns because their colour matches are near perfect. I've got them for my hind build and a few other Russian jets. Uh, and they're super colours, very nice range. Now, these are the Vallejo Mr. Colour. Uh, sorry, Mr. Colour. These are Vallejo Model Colour. Um, now, they, Vallejo also do the thin down spray, out, spray straight out the bottle. I found them to get mixed results when I was spraying them. So I, I did, haven't used or haven't bought them. Uh, at all, so I've, I've stopped using them. But the model color is brilliant for brush painting. Um, thin down with just water on a wet palette. Um, they paint up. They paint for brushes perfectly. Uh, I quite ha I'd quite happily have their whole range in there. Ones very happy with those. Uh, last but not least, nearly uh, Tamiya colors. And this is why the big old pots. You don't see these anymore. It's always the smaller little dinky pots like these. These are my, this is from my old stash of uh, colors. Now you get two, you get XF, which is a matte, you get X, which are gloss, and they're Tamiya paint, they're good. Um, they work as they meant to, and if you need a good colour, if you if it's the correct colour that they make, brilliant. If it's Tamiya instructions and you've got to mix three different colours together, they're a pain in the backside, and then you probably go, then you probably go looking towards Gunzi because they'll probably make the colour correct in one, one bottle to go. Perfect idea, but straight out of the bottle these are great even if you do thin them mix them down wonderful stuff uh now i've put this in here um this is more for tools uh, the weathering products but it's still a paint absolutely 502 oils uh these are really really nice to use uh thin down with lower the thinners um brilliant for weathering dry brushing or if you've got the bravery you can start painting figures and doing flesh with them I'm not that brave. Um, but, yeah, I, I will hopefully do one day, um, but it's not at my school level of what I've tried to do at recent, uh, yet. So good for good for weathering. 
Uh, now onto the thinners and primers. The only primer I've been using for nearly half a year now is the Ultimate Primers. Uh, they do quite a good colour range of these. Uh, black, white, grey, yellow, green and a red as well. Um, this is the yellow one. Uh, I really like using this. I was using this on... Oh, I used this and I now can't... I now can't remember what I used this on. Uh, really enjoyed using this though. I bought this to for painting my London bus I'm going to build uh, in the near future, the Revel one. Uh, as yellow is the best base, base for painting red. So that's why I got that one. But I used it on something else and I was really, really pleased with the colour and the, and the colour and the coverage that these primers do, absolutely wonderful. Uh, and to go along with pretty much all the, the acrylic range I do, I paint, uh, the Ultimate Brush Cleaner, Ultimate Thinners. Um, if you haven't got them and you do acrylics, buy them. It cleans your airbrush brilliantly. It thins all the acrylic paints. You can't go wrong with them. Uh, when you're going on to lacquer colors, uh, now you've got Mr. Leveling Color, uh, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. These are very good for doing gloss coats um, thinned, uh, thinning the paint, the gloss coat with them uh, when you're spraying them, letting it dry for a little bit and then spraying a, a dusting of just the th a thin, leveling thinner over the top makes for a really, really good gloss uh, leveled finish uh, and then straight Mr. Colour Thinners is great for all the, as well, it can mix with all of the acrylics and it can make it into sort of, sort of like a sort of lacquered lacquer paint on there. Uh, I've then got lacquer thinners for when I'm doing zero paints or, or any car body type of painting of like that. Uh, and if you really need to thin something down or remove something from somewhere, that removes everything. A bit too strong sometimes, don't put it on everything because you'll completely destroy every, everything going underneath it. Uh, and then last but not least, low odour thinners for the oils. And um, there's also another thinner. I just if I can find it as well, I'll put that in with the uh, weathering stuff that helps the drying time on that one. Uh, so this is the paints and the thinners that I use in my arsenal when painting my kits. Um, now I'll go on to showing some of the weathering products I've got. Okay, on to weathering products. I haven't actually got a huge amount here to show you. Um, so I thought I'd actually put in with this little bit as well what brushes I've got as well. So the, this, as you can see, there's four items here. Um, I had, I, main ones I'm using at the moment, using the ultimate washes for doing panel lines on the planes, for then doing armour and doing weathering as well on planes, using the 502 up to oils. Also the AK Interactive landing, uh, this, is like a, this is landing dust effects. These are an enamel-based uh, product as well so you need to put gloss coats down for that and you need to put gloss coats down for that you need, don't have to put gloss coat down for that it depends on what you want to use it for if you want to get a stained dirty finish keep it as a mat if you want to be able to remove it and just leave it in a certain specific area uh, put it as a gloss coat and then you've got the old faithful MIG pigments um, they do what they say on the tin type of thing you can thin them down you can make them into water based with thinners you can put a pigment fixer on them to fix them in place you can make mud with them you can make ground with them you can make dust with them multiple uses for those so onto brushes got a few different variation ones here so i've got abtaling 502 brushes uh got these recently really liked really like these Quite nice. Haven't sprayed out too much. This one's got a little stray hair. I can quickly snip off on that one. Quite like those. Like, like to use those. What I didn't grab out of here was. Where are you? Where are you? Windsor and Newton Series Sevens. Uh, wonderful, wonderful brushes. And as long as you look after them, they'll look after you. Type of scenario. Very nice to use. Uh, and that on uh, going down slightly on price, you've now well actually not really much surprise at all. These were I think they're Zuki Mora brushes. The, the painting's gone from them now. They weren't that cheap, um, but they have held the, the heads held together quite well. I grabbed one when I was at Telford last year, and when I'm at their stand, I might grab a few more. So it's, it's held up quite well, and I quite like the thickness of the the handle as well. These are. The small ones have got very small handles. I don't mind, but you can get. I do find I get a bit, bit of finger cramp. Sorry, get in camera. 
that would help, wouldn't it? I do find I get a bit of finger cramp when you're trying to use a small brush constantly. So the slightly larger one, I do find it a lot easier to hold. So, yeah. Possibly worth uh, having a look game at Telford this year for them. Uh, yeah, Windsor and Newtons. Now, sorry, going down on price range, we've got AK Interactives, basic brush range. They're okay. They do a brush. Quite good for doing sort of basic weathering with them. Um, and then we'll go down to the bottom. The Italieris, these sort of rectangular, uh, sort of triangular handled ones, very easy to hold in your hand there. Um, they're okay. They don't last too long. The heads start to spray in them after a, of quite a few uses. Um, good for once you get, they've been worn out a bit for weathering for them ones. Uh, these are the, the cheapy Dalla Roni ones I found in the Hobbycraft. These are actually quite good. Um, they've held together quite well. The, the, the bristles aren't very fine, um, but for when you're doing weathering, they're really good. Quite like. Quite, I've got a few of those in my nice paintbrush drawer, and they've held together quite nicely. Um, and you've got the Tamir modelling brush. This is the quite basic, cheap range. They do a quite high-end version. Uh, I've not had those, so I couldn't say how, how good they are. The, these ones aren't very good. Uh, they've sprayed out quite quickly. Um... This, this now weathering brush. Um, so let's go on to showing you all the types of glue I've got. Okay, so glues. What I'm also going to include in this one is show you uh, what decal uh, solutions I use as well. Like I said earlier, they're the three mains I use for all plastic kits. For super glue, I've got Bob Smith's stuff. Um, you can get it under slightly different names, but the bottle looks the same. Just sometimes a different name. On them good stuff to use also then use the kicker zap kicker to help speed it up uh, for gluing on like clear canopies and stuff like that I've got Gators grip uh, hobby glue thin blend which is for doing uh, it's like a stronger much stronger uh, white glue like you'd use for normal household stuff on that one uh, this is bonded mitre system this is a proper basic uh, mitre glue which builders would use. Good if you're sticking the wood together. Like I'll show you in the kit. I was uh, in a few minutes what I was using on that one. Uh, very good to use. Now for decals, you've got micro scale. This is micro set and micro sole. And then the last one is the Walther's Solver Set. Uh, this stuff's brilliant to use. This is uh, really gets those decals uh, sitting down where you want them to use. Now I used all three of these. I'll use the set first, then the sole. And then if it hasn't conformed properly, the solver set. I put them all through the inside these water brushes. Uh, these are made by Derwent. Um, so you've, you've got a container at the bottom there. You've got a brush head at the top there. You can brush this on and you don't have to spill and waste loads or not, possibly knock these pots over. Because if you use them, you'll know these pots knock over very easily. And also this stuff's mighty strong. And if you get this too far further than your decal, you could possibly um, damage stuff. So you've got to be careful with that. Um, so that's most of my hobby tools that I use. Uh, I also have, I've got some airbrush thin, uh, mixing tools. I've got lots of different types of clamps. It's not a specific one I could say go out and there use. Just if you see them at a shop and you're like, oh, I like the look of that, go buy them. Masking tape pretty much stay with Tamiya and Zuzu, which is through Ultimate Modeling Products. Um, I've got lots of drill, different drill bits and drill uh, sets on there. Um, a few different tweezers, but I always use the Tamiya's. Uh, I've got loads and loads of different cutters, mainly because of my, my job. Uh, but I always say I always use, again always pretty much stick to the Tamiya's in that one. Um, so that's most of my tools that I use uh, on a daily basis when I'm doing my modelling. Um, so let's go on and I'll show you uh, what I've been working on and building recently. Okay, so the first little kit I've been working on and is very, very close to being finished now is Revel's Mark II Golf. Uh, this is a fairly old kit, uh, even it's had a couple of reboxings. This is like a 1980s uh, kit. Uh, it builds up quite simply. Um, it's missing quite a few bit of detail when you really go hunting on the pictures for it. But it's a good little one to build. Um, I'm actually building this for a friend. He's very much into his golf. If you talk to him for very long, his stories will always end up being about him, his brother and his golf. So I thought absolutely perfect to build a little Mark II Golf 
that he owns himself. Um, this has been, uh, I first of all painted it in black primer and then I used the UMP uh, white primer over the top uh, and it's come out really nice. This has been gloss coated with Tamir X22. Um, it's all as per kit. The only things I've remade myself were the side uh, rubbing mouldings down the side there. The original kit's pieces were just enormous and looked so ugly. Um, so, but the rest of it is straight out of the box. It's a nice little build. It was a bit of a uh, break from doing some other bits and bobs, so I was quite happy to uh, build it up. Let me get you in a little bit closer on it. It's quite to see. It's got the checkered interior in there. You've got the front grille with the nice little red band that goes round. We've done, I've done a bit of extra detail in the engine. Oh, look, well, it's coming loose. There's a bit of extra detail wiring done on the engine there. Uh, bonnet's going to need repainting unfortunately. It's very hard to see in this light but it is actually a slightly different shade to the, to the car. You can just about see it there. So I'm going to have to give that a bit more of a repaint on that. The uh, rest of it was quite fun painting all the black edging around the doors and the windows. Uh, that took quite a bit of masking. Uh, but that's a good bit of learning curve to uh, practice up your masking on there, uh, black edging around the windows. I've got some decals to go on the rear, which are Golf GTI logos on there. As I say, the rest of it is all out of the, out of the box. Um, it's still here. This is X22 clear painted on there for the gloss. Uh, why it's quite hard to show the gloss up because it doesn't actually reflect very well on there, but it's come out, it's actually come out very nice when you look at it by the eye. Uh, so I'm quite happy with that little one. Uh, and this will be going off to its new owner uh, in the fair new, fair new near future. Hopefully within a week of this will be, this will be with him. Uh, so let's go on to what's next. Okay, so this one I'm def definitely going to have to start further away from the bench as it's quite a large piece of kit. Now this is a Gallows Balsa kit. Um, Paul over at ISM started building one for a guy his boy's bedroom. And... I do love biplanes and I love the idea of the skeleton showing on them. So I thought, well, you know what? It was making it look easy. So I thought I'd uh, grab one and give it a go. And I'll tell you what, uh, this is a laser cut one. So yeah, it does make it a lot easier, which is really, very helpful. Let me just set you down. So I don't do too much shaky hands on that. Uh, now this is a totally wooden frame. You've got to put the ribs in, you've got to put the supports in. It's quite hard to get in shot because of the size of the thing. Now, you're meant to uh, cover this with the tissue paper and then cover it in dope. Now, what I have done, I've done the rear uh, tail. That one, now they are the rudders. No, that's the rudder. They're the rear. Oh, sorry, I'm terrible with remembering the, the, the correct names. I'm not going to get in trouble and say the wrong ones. So they're the rear parts with the dope and the tissue over them on there and then I've done the rear tail and I know the name of this one you've got the tail section there and you've got the stabiliser see I know that one yeah I'm not good there and this has got some of the decal they're supplying it I must say it's like waving a real flag in the wind I've never seen decal paper so thick in all my life <laughs> um, but that's the same it's the same makeup as this oh there it goes same makeup as this uh, with tissue and then doped and then sprayed green uh, now gone on the back what I will be doing, I will be doping this top wing and putting some markings on there. Uh, and that's, that's then going and sitting up in my son's bedroom. Uh, up on his, well, it's my son and my daughter's bedroom. This thing they're hanging from the ceiling. So it's something quite nice for them to have a look at in the evenings when it's floating around. Uh, and now on to what I'm going to be working on next. Okay, so what is up next? I'd actually started this uh, before I'd done the gullo kit. And I done started doing some of the wood and the gr wood grain on the interior parts and it's bits you need to do and set aside and let dry which I thought would be a perfect time in between to finish off the golf and to finish off the gallows kit um, so it's quite a few absolutely delicately small parts you can just make out the wood grain on them those bits there that I've been painting on using oils on there uh, some metals there's different types of metals on there you can just about see the different colors to them there and then you've got the side pieces it's had all the wood done 
uh, but I now need to start painting up all the smaller details on that. So that's my next main project is paint the details for the internals for this, get the internal parts built and the bracing done and then start cracking on with the engine. And then in between that, I've got a car kit, which I'll just get down and show you while I'm in between doing that. So this is a car I started a good few, few months ago now. Um, and I put back on a back burner. There's just there's body work bits I was working on and trying to work out how I wanted it to look. Um, this is a 68 El Camino SS396. Now I didn't want it looking anything like the box art. I love the I love the shape of these, but the box art just really wasn't doing it. So I went right. What can I do? Um, so first off, you make it low, and you aren't going to get much lower than that unless you're going to start scraping the sump. So that was my first job. Make it low. Uh, I then found these wheels from Pegasus Hobbies over in the states. Absolutely love these. Uh, they are a gold. Uh, silver band with gold spoke uh, wire spoked style rims absolutely love them lovely big deep dish on those um, I've done the detail painting detail work on the engine I've still got one side still to do for the spark plugs uh, what I did spend a lot of time on doing was making a real wood bed for the back end you can see the gloss on there as it goes through that took a lot of work uh, buy some veneer cut it down to thin strips stick it all down tan it to the colour I wanted it to be and then put real gloss that they put onto proper wood over the top so it didn't sink into it. Uh, a lot of work but it will look wonderful when it's done. Um, there's a lot of interior work still to be done on that one. Um, that's very much a work in progress. At the moment uh, the main parts I was trying to do was get the body to a stage which I was happy with. Um, now I'm going to, it's, 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 this is, this is it's still so, so much work in progress. Um, this is the standard front wing here. It's got a stepped area here, which I really didn't really like. It's always down the side, but I didn't really, I didn't really like it on the on this front end here. I'm going to keep it down the side there. I'd, it had a lot of chrome mouldings down there. That's all been removed. Uh, the three fillers been removed and f filled in. The rear chromings gone as well. So instead of having this sort of look there, what I'm going to do is it, it actually extend the lower part of the wing bring it all the way down so this is going to need a lot of sanding a lot of filling and then the original grill in the front just didn't look as you can see in the box art back there where the bumper is it had these overriders which I, i'm called there's lots of different names but i've always known these as overriders because they go over the edge of the bumper um now on the box art you can see this is all one piece and it just didn't look good once I started trying to trying to get rid of, I tried wanted to get rid of these, didn't like them, wanted to get rid of those. Started removing them, then found they were moulded into the grill. So I had to try and cut them away from the grill, found that it was just damaging the grill and the grill wasn't looking good. So then I started thinking, right, if I can separate the bumper, I can separate the headlights, maybe I can make the new grill, but it, it just didn't work. So now I'm making, I'm removing all this edging. You can see that it slightly like dips on these sections here. So I'm gonna put a single headlight either side and then it's going to be making a whole new grill all the way across. Original bumper, definitely modified. It's going to have a bigger cutout in the middle. It's going to have the two front indicators uh, filled in as well. And then it'll have a lower air dam. I think it's called a, spl a sort of splitter. They're like the old uh, GTs used to have that little lip that just comes down the front on the front end there. So it's going to look very, oh look, there we go again. Uh, it's going to look very different to the box art. Uh, and that's very much a work in progress with the. Uh, the amount of work that needs to be doing but it was it was going it's going to be fun it's going to be a definite definite difference and change from just building out the box that's why i had to take a break from that and do the golf because i just needed a bit of a step away but i want to get back onto that so i can actually get onto that and get the wing nuts kits done um so that's me my bench and what i've been working on i hope i haven't been going on too much for you guys um if there's any questions for anything always put them in there um, to all the people that have been watching, uh, subscribing, giving you a thumbs up on the videos, thank you very much, very much appreciated. Um, is there anything you guys would like to see from me in the future? Let me know. If not, I'm going to slowly keep, keep up again with popping some reviews and what I'm doing out in the very near future. Uh, thank you for tuning in and I'll speak to you guys soon.